What's up, fam? It's your boy, Why is your time? The intro. I'm getting gassed up for this episode. I'm super duper hyped right now. We're gonna talk about the author that created the legendary shonen manga, Masashi Kishimoto, aka the author of Naruto. As you can tell from my YouTube channel, I f***ing love Naruto. I love Naruto so much I even made 3 videos about the series and it's one of the first ever anime that I have watched and as you can tell by my voice, I am f***ing love this series. Despite the insane amount of fillers that stupid Piero anime studio throw at us. So without further ado, let's begin today's video on the manga journey of Masashi Kishimoto. Masashi Kishimoto is born on the 8th of November 1974 at Okayama Prefecture. Okayama Prefecture is known for its juicy fresh fruit and interestingly over half of the peaches sold in Japan comes from Okayama. Masashi Kishimoto is born as an identical twins and both of them have impacted the manga industry but that's another story for another day. Growing up, Masashi and his brother Seishi love watching anime and drawing manga ever since they can remember. And there's a few particular anime that caught their heart and embedded in their mind for the rest of their life. Those classic animes include Dr. Storm and Dragon Ball Z by the godfather of modern shonen manga, Akira Toriyama. And King Command by a duo manga artist, Yuda Takmako. Both identical twins fall in love with Toriyama's work and their minds were completely captivated by the ingenious battle scene and the burning shonen action of Dragon Ball. Masashi loves the work of Toriyama so much so he starts playing RPG games like Dragon Quest where the character is designed by the legend himself. By high school time, Masashi and his brother Seisu fell in love with the nationally beloved game of baseball and their weeb journeys were postponed and it went into a hiatus period. Masashi loved baseball a lot and he constantly practiced it after school but a sad reality quickly struck him among with millions of high school students. They simply don't have the talent nor the potential to be a pro understanding the cruel reality of sport. One day after school, Masashi was walking home and he saw a poster. A poster of Akira. A poster that has changed the landscape of anime internationally. A poster that have completely captivated his mind. He stood there and glared at the poster. The unavoidable passing of time felt almost stationary. The fire that had once extinguished has now lit up like it has never been before. Burning deep inside Masashi's heart, he rushed home and started drawing manga like there's no tomorrow. He put everything he has into his forgotten passion and dream that he thought it was impossible to achieve ever since he was told at a really young age. Masashi wants to enhance his art skill and become a manga artist, so he enrolled into the art faculty of Kyushu Sango University. As he grew older, his anime tastes become more sane, and he enjoys anime like Jinro the Wolf Brigade and Ghost in the Shell. As a result, his art style becomes more sane, and that's a huge trouble for him because he wants to serialize his manga in his favorite magazine, the Weekly Shonen Jump magazine, where the main target audience is teens and early adults, and they would much prefer a shonen art style rather than a sane one. His rebuttal was solved when he saw the anime adaptation of Ninku. He noticed that the anime character design has managed to strike a perfect balance between a shonen art style and a seinen story. He quickly researched the design animator and he found out that the animator is Tetsuya Nishio and he started imitating and learning his art style. Looking back, we can clearly tell the discovery of the anime Ninku has a huge impact on the development of Masashi and the character design animator that he imitates, Nisio 
interestingly did work on the character design of Naruto later on his career. How funny is destiny? By the second year of college, Masashi has submitted his first successful manga in Kalakuli to Seiyusha. The manga surrounds the plot of a girl getting kidnapped by a villain which later being saved by the main protagonist, and that awarded him an honourable nomination in the Hopstead Award in 1995. Although it is not a huge award like Tetsuka Award, but like the beginning of many great manga cards, it's a recognition towards his potential. It also shows him that he might have what it takes to survive in this cruel industry of manga. Good Time didn't last too long and his initial success was cut off with a series of rejection. His draft work in Muchikusa, a slice of life manga, an Asian punk, and action manga were rejected due to the storyline being too dark. A whole two years later, his work finally got approved and he submitted his one-shot manga in Naruto for Akahamaru Jump Summer in 1997. Now, this is not the Naruto that we know, instead it's more like an ancestor, an inspiration of Naruto. The story surrounds a young delinquent Naruto trying to find a true friend. Although the plot of Naruto is nothing spectacular and special, but it's definitely heading towards the right direction. Masashi is reluctant to give up the seinen genre completely without another shot, so he tried to serialize several seinen themed manga like redeveloped Kalakuli, a baseball manga in Yakuo, and a mafia manga in Mario. But unfortunately, none of them did well, and it was quickly dropped by the Shonen Jump magazine. As a result, him and his manga editor, Yahagi, start to going back to square one, and decide that the most successful manga by far was Naruto, and they decide to bet everything they had on Naruto one more time. And that decision was indeed correct. Thus, it marks the beginning of an incredible legendary shonen manga. By September 1999, the journey of a young shinobi Utsumaki Naruto premiered in number 43 Shonen Jump magazine. Interestingly, Shonen Jump was heavily dominated by another legendary shonen manga in One Piece. One Piece has already gathered a huge fan base from its bright, fun adventure journey of Rufy and his Nagama within two years of serialization, and it is clearly by far the number one alpha dog within the Shonen Jump magazine. And that motivated Masashi Kishimoto to surpass him using his similar yet distinctly different dark series style of Shonen manga. His manga skill slowly but surely progresses along with the growth of Naruto. He starts introducing the double action technique in the battle between Haku and Naruto. The double action technique is commonly used by Jackie Chan's Hong Kong action movie where different angle is shot to showcase the power of a certain move or punch. He also started to draw panel in a more confusing manner during battle to showcase how fast and chaotic a battle between shinobis are. Also, funny enough, Masashi originally did not think too much about the background story of characters. For example, when he first thought about Itachi, he only decided that he had done something wrong in the past, but he never came up with what exactly he did until the proper introduction of Itachi by volume 16, and why he did it by volume 43. Imagine we never got an answer on Itachi's action, he would for sure become one of the most hated characters in Naruto franchise history instead of the lovable strong brother we all admire and respect. By the end of the tuning arc, the popularity of Naruto blew up due to the hype of the tournament arc, introduction of a new definitive villain in Orochimaru, coupled with a range of flashy imaginary ninjas battle. As a result, Naruto is actually rivaling with One Piece for the number one seat in Shonen Jump magazine. 
The anime adaptation of Naruto was released in 2002, and it brought a whole new level of hype and fan base into the series, putting Masashi Kishimoto's name on a national level, and it silenced all the doubters, haters, and naysayers that once questioned his manga ability. One of the strongest struggles that Masashi Kishimoto faces during the run of Naruto was the departure of his manga editor Kusuke Yahagi, a man that spent 9 years with him, teaching him, giving him advice and helping him in story management ever since he debuted. There's no doubt that he's one of the most important people behind Naruto's early success and it hurt Masashi a lot. His confusion and lack of direction clearly illustrated in Naruto Shippuden. Naruto's journey becomes more confusing and less straightforward. It's not as simple as being the villain. It's not as clear cut as black and white. Villain has their own motive and reason behind their action, and often villains are just heroes in a different point of views, showcasing the shonen theme once again. The departure of Kusuke definitely helped Masashi becoming more independent and grow as a storyteller. 15 years later, the finale of Uzumaki Naruto's journey marks the ending of the Naruto series in 2014, with a whopping total of 700 chapters and 72 volumes. As of August 2019, the Naruto series has accumulated a ridiculous 250 million manga sale, putting Masashi Kishimoto in the 4th place of the best-selling manga history ahead of numerous amount of manga legends like Hirohiko, Tetsuka, and Taito, just to name a few, and he's only been beaten by a Mount Rushmore tier of mangaka like Oda, Toriyama, and Saito. And the success of Naruto is international. In 2006 alone, it is responsible for nearly 10% of all manga sales in the US. Naruto was such a huge phenomenal sensation. The great Oda left a message in the final volume acknowledging Masashi as his true rival. For Masashi, that was like the ultimate accomplishment. Being recognized and respected by legend, a girl, and a role model as a true rival, that meant so much for him. Quote, that felt so gratifying. One of Masashi Kishimoto's favorite manga car is Yoshihiro Togashi. During the serialization of Naruto, Masashi did many one-shots, include Bench, a baseball manga in 2010, and interestingly, his cancelled and rejected works in his redeveloped debut manga, Kalakili, and Mafia manga Mario were also released in 2013 and 2018 respectively as a one-shot. He also worked on numerous amount of Naruto movies like the 7th Hokage and the Scarlet Spring and the Boruto movie, to character design in Tekken 6 and Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm Revolution to cover album for String on Fire by Chisako Takashima and learning Japanese history through manga. In addition, he loves a lot of Hollywood movies, especially The Rock and Spider-Man, and he did try to pay tribute to them in the Boruto movie. Fun fact, Masasu Kishimoto initially wants to draw a manga about the samurai genre, but after reading The Blade of the Immortal by Hiroaki Samula, he quickly realized that there is no way in hell he would beat that art style, and Shonen Jump already had Rurunai Kenshin from Nobuhiro Wasaki. By 2019, Masashi reaches his 44th birthday, he's now married with one son, he's a father now. For him, he felt like he has abandoned his family during the Naruto series, and that emotion is clearly illustrated in Boruto as Naruto constantly neglects his family due to work. And it is now for him to put manga in the backseat and look after his well-deserved family. His legacy is already built with Naruto, and it is time to pass on to the next generation. 
As a result, he finally started his favorite manga genre in 2019 with Samurai 8, The Tale of Hakumaru. But he's taking a backseat and he's only doing the story construction while the artwork is done by his former assistant, Akira Okubo. He also supervised Boruto and led the new generation, Ukiyo Kotachi, to tell the story of Boruto and led Ukiyo Ikemoto to illustrate their journey, just like how Naruto supervised Boruto. The once young and naive Masashi Koshimoto went from chasing shonen manga legends like Toriyama had now became a shonen legend, inspiring the next generation of mangaka like Kuhei Hirokushi to create their own journey. And that's the end of the video, I had so much fun making this video and I hope you do as well. As per usual, leave a comment down below on which mangaka journey you want to see next and I will hopefully make a video about them one day. If your favourite mangaka is not selected, don't sweat, we will cover them in the future. You guys stay safe, stay blessed and have a good day. Finally, I want to say thank you so much Masashi Kishimoto sensei. Personally, I've been influenced by Naruto a lot. This series helped me grow through a lot of struggles during the tough time. That little spiky delinquent taught me the strength of never giving up despite how seemingly impossible a task it looks. Without Naruto, I definitely wouldn't become the person who I am today. And I want to say thank you so much again, Masashi Kishimoto sensei. Although the manga work of Masashi Kishimoto sensei might have been reduced, but the view of fire continue. With the tree leaves dance, once you find frames, the fire's shadow will illuminate the future, fueling the next generation.